So now we're going to look at each of the four different types of fats. So we'll start off with monounsaturated fats. Now, these types of fat protect the heart and support insulin sensitivity, fat storage, amount of fat storage, uh, weight loss, and also help to provide healthy energy levels. Healthy types of foods that contain good levels of monounsaturated fats are avocados, macadamia nuts, uh, olives, and olive oils. But there's also a couple of less healthy choices that we could uh, look at, and those include canola oil, which is sometimes from a GMO, so genetically modified organisms, and can be very highly processed and refined. So make sure if you are eating canola or taking canola oil, you're uh, getting the organic version. Peanuts are an interesting one. I like peanuts, <laughs> but they do tend to be uh, high in uh, molds, which produce uh, aflatoxin, which is actually known to be uh, something that causes cancer. And they can also cause uh, inflammation as well. And of course, certain people are very, very allergic to these. Next, we're going to take a look at polyunsaturated fats. Now, these are your omega-3s and your omega-6 fatty acids. Omega-3s are good for reducing inflammation. They support healthy hormone levels and also help to keep our cell membranes intact as well. So they're very, very important. Omega-6 fatty acids are very important to support healthy brain and muscle functions. But on the flip side, they do also produce or promote inflammation in the body. We don't really need much omega-6, uh, to be honest with you, in our diet. But unfortunately, the standard sort of Western diet now, which has a lot of baked goods, processed foods, sort of crackers, chips, uh, crisps, French fries, breads, all that sort of thing, can all cause quite an inflammatory response in the body. So to help counter that, you might have heard of having your ratios of omega-3s to omega-6s in, in order. So if we can eat more omega-3 fats, so they come from things like uh, flaxseed, uh, salmon, uh, wild caught preferably rather than farmed, that can help to uh, promote balance between them. And now we move on to saturated fats. Now these are really interesting because since the dietary guidelines came out about 45 or so years ago, we've been recommended to restrict the amount of saturated fats that uh, are in our diet. But since that recommendation, chronic illness has actually risen rather than declined. Now, there's many conflicting viewpoints on saturated fats, and it's always difficult because it's something that I've been told for my entire childhood and, and most of my adult life it's difficult to get out of your mind but there's a lot of healthy saturated fats that we can have such as coconut oil uh, we've got multi-chain uh, triglyceride oil as well and things like raw butter can be uh, can be good sources of healthy saturated fats mostly saturated fat comes from animal products so we have to be careful that if we do have meat, ideally it's not processed meat because processed meat has been linked to be a type 1 carcinogen, which means it can predispose you or potentially increase your risk of can developing cancers. So if you are going to have meat, that's fine. Just go grass-fed where possible. It's kind of the organic vegetable uh, equivalent. You know, with vegetables you want to go organic, with fish you want to go wild caught and with meat you want to go grass fed and last and definitely least we've got trans fats this is by far the worst type of fat out of these four it's a byproduct of a process called hydrogenation and is used to turn healthy oils into solids in order to prevent them from going rancid when vegetable oil is heated uh, and there's hydrogen present, the hydrogen atoms are added to uh, a chain, and this turns the oils into solids. So they go from liquids to solids. It also makes healthy vegetable oils 
uh, into not so healthy fats. <laughs> so on the food label uh, ingredients list, this manufactured substance is typically listed as uh, partially hydrogenated oil. So have a look out for that on your ingredients, but steer clear of these wherever possible. Okay, well, thank you for checking out this very basic, very entry level uh, introduction to the different types of fats. Please feel free to comment on the presentation, uh, give it a little like, subscribe to the channel as well. We've got some other good stuff on here and um, we'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.